on. Well, welcome to our combined <laughs> online uh, 10 a.m. service for this week, the 23rd of January, the third Sunday after Epiphany. It's good to be back uh, from holidays. We continue our series on Psalms today. We're looking in particular at Psalm 19. But before we begin, let's uh, worship the God of all creation as we sing together all creatures of our God and King. Thank you, Katie. It is great to praise the God of all creation, uh, wherever you may be praising him at this moment. Uh, it's one of the joys as a staff team. We recently went uh, down on the Great Ocean Road on the way to uh, Lawn to have our staff retreat and the creation was an amazing place to praise God as we saw lizards and ducks and the sea and the sun rise and uh, many, many things of God's creation that testify uh, to his handiwork, as we'll read later. We read that Jesus says in Luke 4, Jesus read from the prophet Isaiah, The Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives. And let us say the prayer for the day. Life-giving God, who sent your Son, Jesus, to proclaim your kingdom and to teach with authority, Anoint us with your spirit, that we too may bring good news to the poor. Bind up the brokenhearted and proclaim liberty to the captive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, the Bible tells us to approach God confidently through our Lord Jesus Christ. As we do so, we must confess our sins, seeking forgiveness through God's boundless goodness and mercy. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by following his laws which he sent before us by his servant, the prophets. We all fall short in many ways to follow uh, the law of the Lord. But we bring to God the confessions of our heart. And now is a time of silence where we bring before God those times we have not lived up to his law. Having given our, the confession of our heart to God, let us draw near to him with sincerity and confidence and pray together. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Grace and peace be with you, and also with you. And you may like to greet with peace uh, the people of your household. As we will in here, those who are helping uh, take this service. Uh, now comes time uh, for our Bible readings. Our first Bible reading is from Kathy. A Psalm of David, Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has sent a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings from the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect the errors? Clear me from hidden fronts. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the medi medi meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. A 
Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptised into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? As a, as, but as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honourable, we clothe with greater honour, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body giving the greater honour to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honoured, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, uh, from chapter 4. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zaphareth, Zarephath, in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. For the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's good to hear from God's word. Uh, we're going to hear from God's Word in terms of the Psalms today. Uh, we've had a series on Psalms, we'll conclude it next week. Uh, the Psalms are unique in the Bible. Uh, the Bible has so many genres and uh, poetry, narrative, 
uh, epistle, uh, just to name a few. The Psalms are unique in that they're not just us hearing from God, but people speaking back to God. All of the Psalms are people singing to God, praising God, praying to God, complaining to God. Uh, they're a new, unique part of the Bible. They help give us the language for approaching God. That said, uh, in Psalm 19, it begins with listening to God. David sets a course, or in fact, the Lord sets a course for David's life in this psalm. It's not where the psalm begins, but it w it's where it ends. Uh, it ends with a prayer I prayed at the start. Uh, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. That's where he ends. He wants the course of his life set by the Lord. But it's not where he begins. He actually takes us, David takes us on a journey. How do we get to this course that God has set for us? We often wonder, don't we, what course is God setting for us this year as a church, for me? Our course in recent times, the course of our lives, has been set by the government in many ways, what we can and can't do. Uh, but we want our course ultimately set by God. We want the course of our lives, the course of our year, the course of our days set by the Lord. David begins by looking at the course uh, the Lord sets for in all the earth uh, through his revelation through creation. He begins the psalm, The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. The firmament is that same word that's used in Genesis for the vault of the sky. David is just talking about uh, not the heavens as in God, where God lives, but the heavens, the skies, the stars, the planets, the moons, the sun. They proclaim day by day who God is. You might have had a time like that when you're in creation. It could be in the backyard. It could be at the beach watching the waves crash in. And, and, it, and it testifies to you. There is a God. There is a creator. There is someone who's creating order in this universe. Uh, some people have worked through uh, an atheistic evolutionary worldview, not that evolution in itself is of a problem, but the atheistic version, that there isn't someone behind it, this, there isn't a creator. You have to work very hard, you have to have a lot of faith, I think, to believe that. And it's not where naturally people find themselves. Whenever surveys have done of the Australian population, whatever they think of God, the majority of people think there's something behind it all. There is a greater power out there. And David's words proclaim this. Anyone could be saying this. You didn't have to have the law of the, the Lord and the word of God to see God at work in creation. In fact, David says it's undeniable. Day to day, verse 2, pause forth speech. And night to night declares knowledge. God is always speaking through his creation. It sets a course for us. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Uh, the, the skies, we can't hear them, can we? No, creation gets rather noisy at times. I was listening to a kookaburra this morning. Uh, but the skies uh, and the planets, we don't hear their sounds if there are any. If you've ever seen Star Wars, when you hear the, uh, the laser beams going, there shouldn't be any laser beams out in space. No sound of them, I should say. It should be silent in those scenes, but it's not. And David says, though it is silent, their voice, there's no place where their voice is not heard. There is no speech, nor are there words, but their voice goes throughout all the earth and their words to the end of the world. This idea is throughout the whole of scriptures. Paul says it in Romans. Oh, we're accountable to God. The, the creation testifies that there is a creator that we owe our lives to. There is no excuse, even for those who say there is no God, there is no excuse that one day there will be an accounting to him. But this accounting isn't what's in mind uh, for David at the moment, rather it's a word of praise. He's enjoying the creation. He's loving that God is speaking through it. In the heavens, God sets a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. The sun testifies to who God is, and there's no escaping from its heat, as we're well aware at the moment, especially the tennis players I've noticed. Uh, this is important. The nations around Israel would worship the sun as a god. But David says, no, this is a created thing created by God. It points to who God is. And we do well to pay attention and listen to nature. We, d we have to have our own course set forth for us, first of all, by the seasons, by the days. No matter how sophisticated we think we are, our lives are still set by this course, aren't they? 
Uh, there's been studies recently, if you read your medical journals, of the impact screens, the blue light of screens are having on our young people and our teenagers. Because that, that blue light is as the same light, one of the lights that comes from the sun. And sleeping patterns are interrupted if we have blue light for too long at the wrong time of the day. The advice from the experts is don't be talking to your friends on the screens at the end of the day. Your eyes need to settle, you need to sleep. We are creatures in creation. We listen to God's words from creation to us. It is for our good. That's where David begins. God reveals himself in creation. But how blessed are we as the people of God? We have the more direct revelation of God to set our course in the law of the Lord. In verse 7, David shifts from this general revelation of creation to the more specific revelation of the law of the Lord and how good it is for us. Uh, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. Now, the word for law here doesn't just mean the do's and don'ts of the commandments. It's the whole teaching of God. It's the whole, for David at the time, the whole of the Old Testament that had been written, or the Hebrew Bible as some refer to it. All that is written there tell us about who God is and his way for us. And we know in him there is a creator who cares for us. At the same time, he does refer to his actual commands. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. When we think of laws and things we have to do, even from God, it can seem like a burden, can't it? It can seem like, oh, I've got to do this. I need to give the sacrifice of obedience. And it can be a burden. But David says to rejoice in them. They're good for our lives. Our lives will be set on a sure path when we follow them. I have an example that's not an actual law of God, but um, as a young man growing up, I played cricket. And there's one of these things they tell you you have to do, sort of a law for cricket, if you like. And that is when you're batting, you need to keep your elbow up. It doesn't come naturally. If you watch big cricketers, they don't keep their elbow up. They're just batting. And so they go out. You'll see a lot of wickets in beach cricket. But if you keep your elbow up, it keeps your bat straight, you don't go out as much. You have more enjoyment on the field. Batting, you watch the good batsmen, they're always keeping their elbow up. Yes, there's a sacrifice to be made, but it's for our benefit and our good. And David understands this. In fact, he celebrates in it. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. The law is good. God's law is good. Yes, Paul will unpack the law uh, later in the epistles and show us that it doesn't save us. But it is, he will, at the same time, if you read Galatians, where he says the law doesn't save us, in fact, it points out that we need a saviour. At the same time, it is a guardian, he calls us. It guides us in what is right and true. David encourages us to delve into God's word that we know his way for us. Often with uh, young people, I deal with youth, they're looking for, what does God want from me? Where where is my life going to go? And they're worried about the long-term future. And David's words are helpful. Don't worry about that. Worry about today. What does God want for you today? He wants you to be faithful in this day. He has wisdom for you to gain from in this day in his word. Learn those practices of spending time in his word. More to be desired is the law of Lord than gold. And not just any gold, even then fine gold. It's better than the best gold. Uh, back then, of course, some of the gold wouldn't be refined. He's saying even the refined gold, it's better than that. It's sweeter than honey, not just any honey. Date honey was the common one, but sweeter than the trippings of the honeycomb. If you've ever had honeycomb, you know how sweet this word is. There's guidance from David there, isn't there? We need to walk in this word. We want to do that, perhaps. Uh, We need to know this law of God and spend time in it. It should not be a burden. It should be a joy. The more we understand uh, God and his word, the more we know how to walk in his ways. I wonder if there's anything you've read lately where God is just urging you on in a certain way or to pray for a certain person or something to learn from in his word today. At the same time, David knew there was a barrier to walking in the law of the the Lord. We don't always find that joy in it. There are things that keep us from it. Here it's helpful to know that there's actually a lot of tie-in between Psalm 18 and Psalm 19. There are phrases throughout Psalm 19, O Lord, my rock and redeemer, uh, and so on, that connect us back to Psalm 18. In Psalm 18, we see it written by the same author, David. In Psalm 18, David is actually thanking and praising God 
for protecting him and keeping him safe through his interactions with King Saul. King Saul and David weren't getting along and King Saul actually served as a negative example, someone who hadn't considered, oh, sorry, someone who hadn't continued to follow the law of God. He'd been set apart as a king by God, but he had wandered from God's way. He had worried more about how he could control things and he wasn't trusting God. Where God, David had done these things, he's praising God because he's done these things and been protected by them. He had sought God's way. And David himself will come to a time where he walks away from God's way, but never away from God himself. He knows that within us we have sin. We struggle. It's hard to keep the law. By the law of the Lord, our servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward, but we have errors and hidden faults. David prays that God will deal with them. He says, clear me from my hidden faults. We need that clean slate. We might not feel like we've been walking in with the Lord as we ought to. We haven't been listening to his law. How do we start a new day clear of hidden faults? Well, David didn't know, but would, we would have the Son of God, the ultimate revelation of God, more so than the law. Uh, in Hebrews we write, in the past, sorry, we read, <laughs> in the past God has spoken through his prophets. But in these days he has spoken to us by his son we have an even clearer revelation of god not just his words but the living word in jesus and he clears us from our hidden faults by his life on the cross uh, the writer of hebrews goes on to call us to draw near to, uh, that draw near to god that we can approach the throne of god because jesus has cleared all that baggage of the past it's no longer with us it's on him on the cross we can work walk in the way of the Lord even if we've been struggling to even if we haven't been doing it lately today is a new day we can start again we are cleared from hidden faults at the same time we need to pray don't you don't we keep back your servant from the insolent do not let them have dominion over me David's kind of praying against peer pressure don't let me fall into the trap Saul fell don't let me be driven by what other people think or my own considerations for myself my own willful sins Keep this from me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great tr transgression. David wants to simply be a godly man. And we should pray to be godly men and women. It is for a blessing for ourselves. It's a blessing for the people around us. And we know how to be that person by walking in the law of the Lord. I don't think that comes easily. As I said, I mentioned I, I work with young people. I remember my own journey. We sometimes do wonder, what does God want from me today? It takes time to know God's Word, doesn't it? It actually takes that consistency of spending time in His Word day by day, and some, some days you don't get to do it. I found a Bible study really helpful once. There was a magazine that came out with a Bible study that was uh, 20 devotions for the month. So you could miss a day and you didn't feel bad. <laughs> you kept walking. I, I found it so helpful. If you find that hard to do every day... Well, maybe aim for four days a week. Start somewhere. Spend more time in the Word than you are at the moment. Don't, don't get into the trap of, I have to do heaps every day. Rather, grow that habit of spending time in, in the Word. And I can tell you, the more you do it, the more you want to do it. And yes, there are times where you'll find it harder. What do you do then? Like David, you pray, you reflect on God's creation and His Word and give thanks for it and praise God that we have it. What a joy it is. Oh, I worry so much for so much of our world that they don't know God's word. They think it's a restriction, whereas they are words of life that people are missing. So having brought all this to God, his understanding of himself, his understanding of creation, his understanding of the word, David finishes with one final prayer. It's a prayer that his words, like God's words, would be a blessing. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. What a great prayer for us to pray today and this year, that all those things in our heart would be what God wants in our heart, that we wouldn't be distracted by the worries and concerns of the world or, or the, um, the material things of the world, but by what God calls upon us to do each day. So let's pray that now. Lord, we praise you for your word. May we dwell in it. 
And Lord, may the meditation of our heart be upon your word and your will for us, that the words of our mouth would be acceptable to you, our rock and redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're now going to sing and reflect again on God's creation. Uh, Some of you may know this, for some of you this may be a new song, but it's again about the indescribable majesty and glory of God that we see in creation. Uh, If you don't know it, maybe just listen to the words and reflect upon them. Indescribable. That song draws on the word of God in the book of Job. And yet, as powerful and majestic as God is, he wants to hear from us, his people, as we pray to him. And Lynn is going to lead us in the prayers today. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, Heavenly Father, may our hearts be always open to hearing your word. 
and ready to respond to the prompting of your spirit within us. Today, as we look forward to celebrating our National Day on Wednesday, we ask that we may truly become the great south land of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our federal and state governments and for all governments throughout the world still grappling with the problems caused by the spread of the Omicron variant of COVID-19. And we pray for all the health workers, doctors and paramedics and the hospital workers who have been working under stress for so many months. We pray for our teachers and students that the return to school may be free of stress. We pray for our Indigenous community that they may receive the recognition and the support and the value of their knowledge that they have. We pray for newcomers and temporary residents unsure of their futures. May their contribution to our nation be also valued. We pray for our neighbours in Tonga and the islands of the South Pacific recovering from the effects of the recent tsunami. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for your holy church, Lord, throughout the world, that despite our differences, all may be united in seeking to spread the good news of your redeeming love. We pray for the planning of World Day of Prayer, which is on March 4th this year. We pray for our Archbishop and the Diocese of Melbourne, for Geneva, our Regional Bishop, and for Ben and the ministry team at St Mark's and St Tim's as we begin the new year of 2022. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all our parishioners, many of us who are still tentative about going out into the community in the current situation. We pray for the sick, for those whose surgery has been postponed, for the lonely and the frail in our community, for the unemployed and struggling businesses, for the heartbroken, that they may find comfort. We continue to pray for Selena in her battle with cancer and for Margaret Anderson and Ruth, sorry, June Reeves for Jenny Lording and Jenny Heathcote, for Beryllie and for Bernice. Also for Kerry and Carol and Caroline, for Rose, for Lincoln and for Barry. Lord, in your mercy, we remember with love and gratitude the faithful members of our parish now in your heavenly care who passed away at this time of the year. There's Lynn Barnes and Val Venn, Edna Lennon, Jessie McConkie, Arch McKellar. Encourage us, Lord, with their example, so that we may run with perseverance the race that lies before us and share with them the fullness of joy in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept our prayers, Lord, in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And uh, join me with in the prayer that he gave us. Father, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is. In Give us today our bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Before we sing All Heavens Declare, I might actually go through our notices so we can finish with a song. Uh, next week we can meet in person. Uh, as Lynn so helpfully prayed for us, we need to be praying about the COVID situation. Uh, so if you happen to be, say you're on prayers next week and you're feeling fine all week and then you wake up Sunday morning and you think, oh, I'm on prayers, don't come to church if you're feeling sick. 
even though you think, oh, I need to do it. Uh, we'll work our way around it. It's more important we really pay attention to our health, especially at this time. Uh, so if you're feeling any symptoms, don't come to church that week. Come next week if it's all passed. Uh, I'll have updated the website. As we speak, as we're recording, I've been away where there is no internet, so I haven't been able to update it recently, but on Sunday uh, it will be updated. Uh, this week we had Andy and Myth come on Tuesday, I think. No, Wednesday it was. Uh, uh, there, when you come next week, we'll have cards that you can uh, find out how to pray for them, if you want to support them. If you want to talk to people who are there, it's really fascinating, the work that God is doing through Mission Aviation Fellowship in the top end of Australia and indeed throughout the world. And it's a great blessing that, who would have thought, if you're a person out there who loves God but you also love planes, this is your thing to support. <laughs> Uh, it was fascinating. We we're very thankful and it was so great to put a face uh, to the names as Andy and Miff shared and little baby Nora was there too. Uh, St Mark's Fitzroy, uh, we're collecting food again for the homeless. Uh, for those of you who have received your pew sheet in the email, uh, casseroles are the key thing at the moment. Uh, put them in takeaway containers and we'll put them in the freezer ready to go. Uh, contact Rosemary. Uh, make sure you look in your email if you want to find out more about that. Uh, and finally, check in with each other. I won't say finally, because there's also a notice uh, uh, in the uh, pew sheet about giving uh, to make sure you want to keep your giving going even if you can't come to church. Uh, there's e easy ways to do it online and we can still uh, give our gift to Dietrich too. Uh, keep praying for him as he begins his new position. But having brought those uh, messages up, if there's anyone here, no more messages? Uh, there'll be more messages from the staff from our retreat. We did quite a bit of planning for the year ahead, uh, but that will be passed on in coming weeks. So now let's finish our worship together online uh, with our final song, All Heaven Declares.
Almighty God, who redeemed us through the resurrection of Christ and has brought us out of slavery into everlasting freedom, give us your joy and peace in faith and bring you to your eternal inheritance and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And may the meditations of our heart and the words of our mouths be pleasing to the Lord. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.